It's time to hack the movies. Today, we're talking about tapes. Hi, everyone. Tony from Hack the Movies here. And uh, I got a list of trauma films here that I'm thinking of possibly putting in the store for people to rent. Is that a clarinet? Oh, my God. Hey, you're not you're not the guy on Grinder. Wait, wait a minute. I I I'm sorry. I'm not the guy on Grinder, but you're that guy from Guardians of the Galaxy and Suicide Squad, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you liked it, huh? Yeah, I did. I did. Did you did you like me in Dark Knight Rises? Dark Knight Rising. I was afraid to even approach you. I had no idea. I thought it was because it wasn't you on Grinder. God damn it. No, it wasn't me. get really nervous when I have to do it for anybody else. That's okay. I can okay. actually do about five songs, not bad. But that's good, that's good. Those have to be loaded on uh, Maker's Mark. Yeah. <laughs> so in addition, energy. yes. in addition to here, please take a seat. Thank you. Please take a seat, you're making me nervous, take a seat. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So in addition to being in those superhero films and everyone remembers you from those films, you've also made and distributed films. Yes. And you even made a new film whose title I can't say in the first two minutes of a video or I won't make any money, but I will oh, say it eventually. Oh, no kidding. You, uh, you work, you <laughs> made trauma films, right? You you can't say, uh, um, uh, the power of the dog on, uh, on, uh, on YouTube? Uh, not in the first minute. They uh, get upset about it, that. They get very, a, very upset about that. <laughs> it is a movie that stinks. Anyway, can you if introduce anyone yourself? to see the movie that's going to win Best Picture, Power of the Dog. Why am I talking about it? It's just boring. Can you, can oh, you, my God. Can you properly introduce yourself for our fans watching? Greetings from Tromaville. I'm Lloyd Kaufman, president of Troma Entertainment and creator of the Toxic Avenger and uh, expert foot fetishist. Also doing, I barely see this, phallic sign. At any rate, uh, Troma Entertainment. And when we are making those great movies at Troma Entertainment, like Tromeo and Juliet or hashtag Shakespeare's Wank Storm, uh, we like to kick back and have a good time with Hack the Movies. Yes. It's Hack the Movies. Yes. The most educational, entertaining. Yes. yes. We, uh, and, you are currently uh, on our show on Hack the Movies called Talking About Tapes. And I wanted to talk about some tapes with you, Mr. Kaufman. Is that okay? Is that okay? Talking about taint? Tapes. Oh, tapes. 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 Uh, tapes. tapes. Sure. No, no. I, I, I like used tape. to talk about taints on another app, but I don't upload there. If anymore. you want to see a good trauma movie, The Taint, it was the uh, uh, sort of the uh, anchor film on Trauma Dance Film Festival right. about 10 years ago. It's very, very good. Very, I, I, very need to, I need to. That is one that I haven't it's a good seen, one. Good surprisingly. One. Good. So, yeah, you know, I have all these movies in the store, but I don't have many trauma movies, and I felt really sad about that. So, I, uh, <laughs> I have. I have some lists of your trauma movies oh, and I was going to I was going to talk about them and hopefully you can give me some well, insight. Well, they're pretty on them. intellectual, so They you know, are they very intellectual. Now, de- may not oop, may not be your demo. So you have professional Don't worry about demo. bumping that mic. Our demo. one co-host Johanna bumps the mic all the time. Where is Johanna, by the way? Uh, she's upstairs. Anyway, oh. I think the first tape we should talk about is of course Johanna. No. The Johanna no, story. No, no, not the Johanna. We're never talking about it. The Toxic Avenger. Yes. The classic. Uh, you mind if I read the back of this No, tape no, here? please. The Toxic Avenger is our Mickey Mouse. I printed out the tapes here. Here we go. Thank you. I want to know who wrote this, by the way. It's pretty good. What's faster than a spreading germ, more powerful than Mr. Clean, and more lethal than nuclear waste? Is it a floor cleaner? Is it a waste site? No. It's the Toxic Avenger, the first superhero from New Jersey. He French fries his foes, dry cleans the dastardly. Watch out, bath guy, bath guys. Watch out, <laughs> bad guys. Truth, justice, and the American way is on a righteous rampage. It's Melvin, alias Toxic Avenger, and he's gonna get you. Transformed from wimp to warrior by a dip in a chemical pool, Melvin talks to his friends. Battles, corruption, and crime in a small American town, but can even an industrial strength superhero survive a showdown? Against an army of tanks and troops. Thrilled army to of the what? Act- army of what? Army of tanks and what? troops. You're welcome. Tanks. You're welcome. <sighs> That's a See, good one. That's humor for you young students. <laughs> 
thrill to the action if adventure. I can, if I can be successful after 50 years with that kind of humor. And that's yes, a lesson for you young students. And yes, romance right, of this hilarious tongue-in-cheek hit. Warning, explosively. Tongue and cheek? Yeah, it's tongue and cheek, that? apparently. Did you write that, Michael? Oh, my God. <laughs> explosively funny may cause irritation to the excessively uh, serious. It's now, how did the Toxic Avenger come to be, Lloyd? I'm well, sure you've talked about this several times before. <laughs> yeah, I think this is uh, for the uh, the Tox Box uh, 4K. 4K. Oh, the 4K. So I think this is uh, kind of what's coming. Uh, it's what's being worked on. Okay. And I believe our uh, distributors, MVD, MVD. Oh, yeah, I know MVD. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, they, they live here, I believe. Ed Siemens yep. uh, and uh, great people, great people. So I think they uh, wrote that, which is much better than anything we wrote. That. <laughs> so how did uh, Toxic Avenger come to be? Where did you guys get that idea for that movie? Uh, I, I, my first book, All I Need to Know About Filmmaking, I learned from the Toxic Avenger, of course. Yes. Uh, that has a long, I mean, I could literally write a book about how <laughs> it, it took a couple of years to get it uh, straight. Yeah. But Michael Hers read uh, one of the trades. He saw that uh, a headline, uh, horror films are, are no longer, sorry, I've got these terrible hemorrhoids and diarrhea all at once. Oh, it's unbelievable. God, I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> luckily, <laughs> luckily I've got some emodium. Oh, that's good. That's you suffer from the heartbreak of diarrhea. Emodium, folks. It works. It works really well. I can vouch for this. If it didn't, this. the uh, Amtrak train and uh, <laughs> sitting next to Rocco, this would have been a nightmare. <laughs> oh, I'm so relieved. Anyway, what anyway. were we talking about before you, oh, toxic before you got out of diarrhea? Yeah, how did yes. Toxic Avenger come to be? <laughs> well, in a nutshell, my wife and I would go camp. Well, first of all, Michael Hurst saw in Variety this big headline that yeah. horror films were commercially not as, uh, you know, commercial. Yeah. That genre is on the way down. Which, of course, was stupid, stupid headline. But then Michael said, we do what the experts say not to do. So whatever they say to do, we do the opposite. So mm -hmm. Michael said, okay, let's go there and we do a horror film. But we like uh, satire. We like comedy. So we decided to mix the genres. And mm -hmm. we had done that with the uh, squeeze play waitress stuck on you, uh, four or five raunchy comedies yeah. that had the good luck to come out ahead of Porky. So we did very well. Yep. And, th and then we started going down with the raunchy comedies because the big studios, they were making the same kind of movies, except they were using good acting and, and good good uh, directing. So uh, I don't know. I think there's good acting compete. and directing in this. Well, that's why we switched. We had to go to uh, the Toxic Avenger, which is comedy. Yeah. But that's why it didn't do well initially, because uh, uh, people didn't get it. They thought it was a horror. They wanted to see a horror film. Not not the kids, but the yeah. theater people, the theater owners. Yeah, you know what? They didn't, I, get, um, it. They didn't get it. I didn't see it. It's something I always heard about. Uh, for whatever reason, the video stores I went to, even the mom and pop ones, they didn't have trauma films. I don't know why. They're, I think, uh, probably community <laughs> standards. <laughs> uh, but I always heard about it, and I did. I thought it was a horror movie. And then luckily in college, like uh, Cable On Demand, they had like a collection of your films. And I finally watched it. I'm like, oh, I didn't realize this was like a fun superhero, like a violent superhero there, there thing. You go. Bad marketing. That's yeah. You... And I fell in love with it. And it's so funny. It, it was the funniest thing about the movie was when I realized that this is like a tutu for a ballet, like a ballerina. Yeah, I've seen this image a million times. Like, wait, <laughs> is that what he's wearing? And then he wears it in all four films. Yeah. He never takes yeah. it off. Isn't that great? <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I fell in love with the movie. I love the character of Melvin. Uh, well, falling into this stuff. Thanks. The uh, the bullies are hilarious. Thank you, Tony. Uh, yeah, and I actually really loved. I love the entire series. I believe the second one opens up in a video store. The third one. The third, third one. The yeah, third one. Right. That's great. I love that kind of fourth wall breaking, which yeah. I didn't like. I was a, I was used to fourth wall breaking, but when I saw that, like that, I've broken the wall like that many many times. Even yeah. on the show, we don't even have a fourth wall. We don't have a third <laughs> wall. We only have two walls. Well, it's they are beautiful walls. But I love yeah. when they're like, "We want to rent trauma movies." They're wow. like, "No, we don't have it." <laughs> well, see, but you were marketing. You were yeah. word of mouth. You can't buy word of mouth. That's yes. The, yes. The one you and I and uh James mm -hmm. Wolf, it's word of mouth. They yeah. Helped. Nobody helped us. And yeah, Toxic Avenger, like you said, it's like your Mickey Mouse. It's Huge. Um, from, from literally nothing. I mean, yeah. we brought it to the Cannes Film Festival. Mm -hmm. I think it was 83 or 84. And we p put a lot of money into post uh, billboards in front of the Carlton Hotel, you know, right in the center. Yeah. Couldn't miss it. And uh, goes, uh, crickets, nothing, <laughs> nothing. And the people who went to the screening, the distributors from around the world, they didn't get it. They're too, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't, 
they couldn't define it exactly. They yeah. couldn't pigeonhole it. And then we got one theater in New York owned by a French woman who I knew when I was hanging around Andy Warhol's thing. Mm. When I was at Yale, I'd go down on the weekends because I, I love Warhol movies. And uh, uh, so I'd hang around there, and there was uh, Jackie Raynal who went okay. on to buy the the uh, Bleecker Street Cinema. And the day the thing opened, the day it was a midnight show, mm-hmm. too. The day it opened, there was like a line around the block. Wow. Yeah, I mean, literally, not a, around the whole block, but huge. I couldn't believe it. That's and, insane. And then it went from there, 2,000 screens yeah. in the United States. And now it's like a phenomenon. You had well, a... I don't know about that. Well, if, <laughs> Still a lot of people have not heard of the Toxic Crusaders. Yeah, well, you had a cartoon show at one yeah, we point. we did. Toxic Crusaders. They're coming yes. back. They're back. I, I have friends who were familiar with that show and own the toys, not knowing that they were part of a movie series. And then, like, I... I, my one friend, I think I showed him the movie, and he's like, what is... Is this where the cartoon came from? This yes. is insane. It is insane, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That, that's, uh, that's the one thing about every once in a while, manna falls from heaven. <laughs> and, uh, boy, we get lucky with the uh, Toxie, with the to- with the toys, and there are about 200 companies making yeah. and giving us front money. You know, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, and like I said, I love the the whole series. I love well, how thank the, you. Thank I love you. how the bad guy in three is literally Satan. I love that. <laughs> uh, I love four with the whole like alternate timeline. I thought that was cool as Wasn't hell. That, I, I, yeah, isn't it wonderful? Yeah, I, I agree. That, it's just people don't know. People don't know. Even the fans don't know about Citizen Toxie, which I feel is the best one and the most courageous. That and, one is pretty good. Uh, yeah, anti-abortion, uh, mm. made fun of the Columbine thing. Uh, you know, put down the nasty, the bad, uh, you know, the murdering kids. Yeah, diaper mafia. You know, diaper mafia. Yo, yeah, the diaper mafia, making which, fun which of showed like babies, up. Babies, babies. Uh, there, there were diaper wearing people in your new film, yeah. which we can now say, we can now say the title, hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm, Shakespearean shitstorm. No, hashtag. Tag. Well, actually, we're going to change it to hack the movies tag, Shakespeare's shitstorm. That's a hashtag title. Shakespeare shitstorm. Yes, sir. And the hashtag is very important because uh, the current environment in which we live, yes. where we have free speech as long as we don't say anything, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the hashtag is a symbol of that. So, And as you saw, that theme is prevalent in the film. Yes, know? yes. I, I actually, <laughs> skipping ahead, I really enjoyed the new film. Yeah, it's so nice of you. The Toxic Avenger is coming to your town. Look out. So yes, Toxic Avenger is probably the biggest trauma franchise, but there's another franchise that I really love. But wait, there's more. Yes. (laughs) The Class of Nukem High. That's uh, amazing. And I have the tape here. Oh, no kidding. Uh, Here we go. Straight A honor students mutate into a bloodthirsty gang of punked out bikers. Shy young couples turn into lust crazed sex weasels. I don't think I've ever met a sex weasel. Well, uh... <laughs> and a putrid flesh eating slime monster lurks in the basement. Just another school day at Tromaville High. The strangers, the strangeness begins when highly radioactive sludge from a neighboring nuclear, nucle, nuclear, nuclear. People get really mad when you say nuclear wrong. Uh, oh, power du- plant. Nuclear. nuclear? Huh? If you say nuclear or something like that. Nuclear. nuclear. People say nuclear. And oh, they, right, right. They That's yell right. at you on the internet when right. you say that. I, <laughs> I used to say that. Power uh, plant seeps uh, onto campus. Soon discipline crumbles. Morals go out the window and megavolt rock and roll madness takes over the student body as the hideous mutant organism in the school basement continues to grow. So does the virulent outbreak. You're giving away a lot of the plot. And I just want to mention that. Of bizarre, violent behavior. It's a crash course in genetically deranged humor for the kids and creatures. The class of Nukem High. An outrageous dose of nuclear age. Adventure from the makers of cult classic Toxic Avenger. I love class of Nukem High. Well, thank you. Uh, how did you come up with this one? How did you guys come up with this the, gem? The... Uh, uh- uh, again, the Toxic Avenger, I can go on for an hour. There's a lot of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. It took me two years to figure it out. Yeah. And clearly it was not what the public was looking for <laughs> initially, and then yeah. it caught on. But uh, Newcomb High, the the the, the, uh, the labor, bureaucratic, and corporate elites conspired to build a nuclear power plant uh, literally a quarter of a mile away from the most populated area of the United States of America. And uh, and that wasn't enough for these fuckers. They, <laughs> they used shit cement they had, uh, they the unions were uh, they had drinking at eight in the morning. You know, there was terrible nuclear power plant. 
Oof. Uh, so eventually, the public caught on, and uh, they they shut, they stopped. They uh, uh, okay. Shoreham, it was called. I think Con Edison. I, I can't remember which utility, yeah. but it was uh, silenced, and it was basically almost built. So yeah. that's what started it. And then the New York. I don't know if you've ever had the pleasure of being in a New York public school. I have not been in a New York public school. I've been in New York plenty of times, but not the public school. The system. current, the current uh, students, they yeah. look just like the people in in a uh, class of Newcomb High. Oh yeah, it's unbelievable. <laughs> and they have uh, like we put, we had the uh, uh, X-ray machines, and mm-hmm. they, uh, it it's exactly it, it like came true. Yeah, I really, it's unbelievable. I really love this movie. Um, well, I by the lo- way, I don't mean to interrupt you, but yes. there are five Newcomb High movies. There are. And by the time we made Return to Newcomb High and Return to Return to Newcomb High, yeah. Lemmy's last movie, uh, the, the the punks, uh, the Cretans, the yeah. gang, they, they don't look crazy. They don't look like they've mutated. They just look like normal <laughs> students, you know. It, was, it is funny, yeah. The punks in this, they don't really look like no, punks they anymore. Look they like just look the, like people yeah. that you just see around. <laughs> Juilliard students, you see. Yeah. I studied the clarinet. Uh, but no, Class of Newcomb High, I uh, really fell in love with it in college. I had a great. lot of fun watching it. Uh, it's a really good story. I love the social commentary of the nuclear, nuclear, nuclear power plant. But, of course, the most memorable thing for the movie for me is that awesome-ass song. What's going on? Who, what, what, tell me how that song came to be. That song is great. Isn't that something? And, it's you know, so we, good. We used it again in uh, Return to Newcomb High and Return yes. to New- Newcomb High. Yep. And the credit sequence for Return to Return to Newcomb High is, I believe, one of the greatest credit sequences it's ever been in any kind of movie. It's uh, great. <laughs> the song is amazing. I, I Ethan li- Hurt. Ethan Hurt. You're thinking about uh, what's, what's going yeah, on? Yeah. 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 Oh, I literally nice. woke up this morning because I knew we were doing this. I'm like, oh, I haven't listened to that song in like a while. I played it. I just been well, singing should, it in my head. I should learn it on this thing. Yeah. Can, That's do you hilarious. think you could try it? Uh, uh, I probably can't. I do so, you already saw. I didn't. You, people think I went to Juilliard. I, I went to Juilliard uh, Academy, but it was spelled J E W. Hence, not that was a very funny ability. joke. Lloyd Kaufman. Kaufman. <laughs> Kaufman. Okay, I just want to make sure. When, whenever anyone tells a Jew joke, I got to make sure they, I know the, the audience knows they're Jewish. I got to say oh, the last oh, we thing. Oh, we own that word. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes. Right. It's okay for him to tell that it's joke. It's okay for me. To, not, if you're, not if you're my wife. Okay, never mind. It's sometimes that, okay the, the to tell that joke. The commissioner. The commissioner. Wife um, was, you know, she, Pat, you've met her. She was yeah, met her. New York yeah. State Film Commissioner for 20 years. Yes. Killed off four governors. Two oh, my God. <laughs> two Republicans and two uh, Democrats. Uh, you better not say she, that. That might hurt or job. help her career, actually. <laughs> <laughs> She's now gone up a huge uh, career nice. move to producing Ooh. hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm with uh, Justin Martell, who you guys know. Yes. Uh, Ship to Shore uh, Records. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also uh, John Brennan, who also worked for Troma. Yes. Uh, shot some short films uh, mm-hmm. and uh, produced hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm. Yes. And they created, along with Matt Mangerides, who's the guy who came up, not he, but other... He's the one who told me about the fans uh, campaigning for hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm to to go to the to vote on the hashtag Oscars fan favorite. <laughs> go to Oscars fan favorite, uh, t- tweet hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm at them, and uh, it, just the idea of what the, what happens when they when, when whoever is a snob see that. The other thing we did, uh, Terra Firmer. Did you ever see the R-rated version of Terra Firmer? It's Wait, a, I don't know who you're talking to on that empty part of the store, but keep talking to Mrs. it. I'll Mrs. let it happen. Mrs. Mrs. Miller's out there. She's oh, okay, Mrs. Every Miller. The movies uh, uh, in the mo- the movies for mom and dad section. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, actually, Mrs. Miller was a, a a crazy woman who'd go to every single Johnny Carson Tonight Show. Mm-hmm. She'd always, and she became kind of famous. You know, yeah, little old lady. Uh, so, uh, but the, that's Rocco Ziebenbergen who uh, wrote and directed. Uh, I need you dead. Oh, I've not uh, seen Festival I need you favorite? dead. Yeah, I, I was, you know, the the title was a little threatening to me. <laughs> I went to go rent it, and it's like I need you dead. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> I, what have you done for me lately? Uh, but I will watch it now. I will watch it's, it now. It's, it's good, very good. Um, so one of the reasons I love Class of Newcomb High, I have a personal attachment well, to thank it. Thank you. 
when you were making Return to Nukem High, uh, Volume One, you were promoting it. You actually beat Hollywood to the the soft reboot, uh, what you call it, the soft reboot uh, trend that's going on right now, where it's like it's technically a sequel, but it feels like kind of like a remake. Uh, Return to Nukem High came out what before Force Awakens. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're yeah. ahead of the curb, Lloyd. Oh, you're really? ahead of the curb, yes. yes. Well, for more reason to tweet hashtag Shakespeare <laughs> Shitstorm at hashtag Oscars fan favorite. Oscars with an S, yeah. fan favorite. Let's well, do, let's piss, get them, piss them off, right? I mean, the fun. We did a uh, soft, a R-rated version of Terra Firma. Yeah. And I come into the film. For, we, we have a director's cut. Mm. And the MPAA, there was nothing that was permitted. You yeah. couldn't have a cigarette. You could, I mean, they literally did. Uh, so we, uh, I did a version where I go into the movie and I tell them this, uh, by the way, uh, we, and I held up a kitten. Uh, we were not allowed. The MPA didn't let us use the word pussy. So <laughs> here, this is something else. Uh, so, so we, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, there's that kind of, there's, uh, there is a scene where yeah. I, the blind director, pee on uh, Debbie Rashawn and uh, who, semi-star. Yeah. And, um, we obviously that was cut. Yes, and uh, and so we when I go in the film, it's uh, throwing peas at uh, uh, you know peas peeing on people with, yeah. with little peas and stuff. So okay. and the, the thing they turned me on is total waste of time. I couldn't <laughs> possibly make money, but uh, it's hilarious. And uh, the uh, just the idea of these na- just mm. pig filthy pig you know Weinstein's yes uh, Junior Weinstein's seeing <laughs> that take that R rated and. Yeah. Having to watch what they made us cut, which is evident in, in every, mm. uh, uh, what's his name? What uh, The one in the building with the, with the actors. Remember that one? The one in the building with, with the, the actors. I no, I haven't. I don't uh, remember that one. Yeah, maybe it'll come to me. Die then, Hard? Uh, yes, that's okay, it. Okay, Die Hard. <laughs> John McTiernan directed Die Hard. So, so we, uh, we, we, Michael Hurst looked at that and he told me, your director's cut, no problem. You got an easy R. Yeah. We, we we gave it to the MPA and they told Michael Hers, the boss told it, not Valenti, the real mm. boss, told us NFG, your movie is NFG, told us stunk. They're not <laughs> supposed to tell you any. Yeah. And he said, we'll never ever give you an R rating, never. Jesus. So I was, I thought it would be amusing that, and we did get the R, but it, yeah. it was, in a, you know, this hilarious R rated vision. <laughs> but it, uh, people have found it and it is hilarious. That's good. I don't know if it's on the... Uh, Terra Firmer DVD or not, but we'll find out. That but, we're, we're gonna put that up on uh, on the trauma now. <laughs> As I was saying about Return to Newcom High, the reason yes. I really like it is when you were promoting it, I met the actress and actor Asta Paredes oh, and yeah. Clavon Karlowitz, and we became really, really good friends. Where so like this movie led to like a really great friendship that well, I still hey, have it today. Led, it led to their marriage. It led to their marriage. And I was in the wedding. You were at the wedding. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah, this yeah. movie, that's right. It was a this movie trauma. literally changed my life and like many tra- people's lives. Trauma, a lot of, uh, I, I, I recall that uh, one of my daughters was there and a lot of people were very drunk. Yeah, was it was, not, it was, it was a wedding. It was a lot of fun. Matt <laughs> Clowman was totally zombified. I, I remember being on uh, Doug Sackman's uh, bus, his production bus, yes. and we, we had a lot of fun. I yeah, he's great. was hanging out with this one guy. We were coming up with all these crazy ideas, and I was like, yeah, man, we got to like stay in contact, and I never talked to him again. It he was lives in Philadelphia. Right <laughs> no, here. not Doug. Some oh, other oh, guy oh, who oh, was oh, there. Oh, no, sorry. Doug, I know. Doug, yeah. I've hung out with. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Return to Nukem High, I would definitely check that out. It's very, very good. All the Nukem High movies are good. I love the second one with the giant was a rat or uh was a rat, right? The giant rat in the second Nukem High. Was it a rat or no, a No, no, it was a monster. It was a uh Oh no, no, I'm sorry. There is uh, uh the uh, wonder uh, what was it? The wonder Yeah, it's well, a sorry, squirrel. Squirrel, when, that's it. Sorry. Tell me the wonder squirrel. Can you tell I didn't no, have time to skim the movies duck. before the episode? No, but I have seen them. The duck, uh, Melvin the Wonder. The Melvin is in the new Kevin, one. Yes. Kevin the Wonder. Kevin duck. is in the new one. Yes. Right. yes. Tommy is in volume two and three of the yes. 80s. Yes, yes. Um, Melvin is in the new one, the uh, duck. Kevin. Uh, Kevin, 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 duck. Kevin is yeah. the duck. Yeah, I love the Kevin a, in that. We had a duck, the highest paid actor in our movie. I heard about Wasn't there like a fundraiser for the duck or yes. something? Yes, Kickstarter. <laughs> we called it a duck starter. <laughs> so, we. They. We. Michael wouldn't buy the, uh, it costs about 10, 15,000 bucks. And, uh, for, you know, the actors are sleeping on the floor. Why should we pay a duck, uh, all, you know, who have a manager and yeah. they had to have a, they had to have a motel room and, and two other ducks had to go with it because 
they, they are, can't be alone. They're very social. And, yeah. And then they stick them. Uh, the other two are just close enough so they fuck up the sound. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin the Wonder Duck. <laughs> so what you're saying is don't put a duck in your movie? Or? No, I'd still. I'd still. I, okay. think, I think chickens are funnier. Chickens and are funny. Stuck on you. We had fifty thousand chickens. Oh Jesus! Christ. And we made it. We actually made a chicken, a, a porno movie, to get chickens to lay more eggs, and uh, that's it's very fun. It's stuck on you. I think that's our best uh, comedy before we went into whatever. Good. We're doing. What's going on? By the way, Excelsior. This is my favorite uh, trauma released film. Uh, uh -huh. Surf Nazis Must Die. Mind, mind Good if choice. I, Good mind choice. Mind if I read this here? No. Uh, from the makers of cult hits Class of Nukem High and The Toxic Avenger, it's a lunatic romp into a warped apocalyptic post quake world of wave riding killers run amok. That is a tongue tire there. Of uh, the time, the near future, the place, Los Angeles, and an aftermath of devastating killer earthquake, the situation, total anarchy, as a sadistic neo Nazi surfer gang turns the beach blood red in their blitzkrieg campaign to rule the waves. No one can halt the megalomaniac reign of Adolf and his stiletto healed, leather clad Eva. Eva. Until they slaughter the only son of Eleanor Mama Washington. Suddenly, the murderous surf Nazis find themselves facing the ultimate vigilante as Mama launches her own all-out counteroffense. So hit the beach for a weird, wacky ride into a totally gnarly, psycho-surfing safari. Oh, wow. We definitely did not write that. <laughs> yeah, that was it's actually in English. It's terrific. Yeah, that was uh, a lot. So yes, um, <laughs> did you, you Troma didn't make this one, right? You just, just no, we only distributed. Yes, yeah. So how did you? Uh, what, what, what was your first thought when you watched Surf Nazis? I loved Lost it. Eye? It was great. And it's so good. It's wonderful. It looks beautiful. Yes. Again, it's, what is it? Nineteen eighty something. And yes, I, I can't remember when, but in the eighties. Well, this was released in nineteen ninety, but I'm I assume oh, it was made. Well, maybe it was late eighties, whatever. But oh no, in nineteen eighty seven. Nineteen eighty seven. There it is. There sense. it is. He, he, yeah. he, uh, he, uh, Peter George, the director, uh, used the, the DP that did Any Wednesday. The uh, okay, kind of a director who's violent. Uh, very good. Anyway, whatever <laughs> it's called, Any Wednesday. It's uh, yeah. a surfing. And yes. the camera guy who did that, uh, it, it is a surf. Any Wednesday is about surfing. Yeah. I was really surprised when I saw Surf Nazis Must Die because I thought it was going to be, you know, like more comedic and stuff. But like, no, it has like a serious yeah, feel definitely. and whatnot. And again, beating Hollywood years earlier, hero of the film is a strong black woman. A middle-aged strong black woman. You yeah, never see that in a film age. now. A fat middle-aged. Yes. <laughs> You never see that in the film these days. Well, you never, you certainly didn't see it back then. No, you didn't. And that's like one of the most refreshing things. It's like, wow, this movie is very, very different. See, isn't that great? Because yes. the guy who was making it, the guy, are you leaving? <laughs> yeah, I'm leaving. Are you? Where are you? Oh, I'm going to be here. Oh, oh, good. Because about 50 people, <laughs> we had 50 people in the audience. I, I suddenly I see a bunch of people leaving. <laughs> Sorry. All I know is that Screen Wave, yeah. uh, uh, we had the honor of. Doing some business with Screen Wave. Yes, uh, you might be familiar with them. They are a great. little bit. They're amazing. They are. They They're are great. Independent. They totally, are amazing. Totally independent. I'm just winking to no one. <laughs> anyway, go on. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, Surf Nazis must die. Like I said, I really love this series. I love post-apocalyptic things. Um, and yeah, it was just a cool, unique idea. I mean, it's doing the uh, the, the trope of uh, L.A. and whatnot sinking to the ocean, which technically wouldn't happen. That's been that's a that's a yeah, myth. But, but in a way, look what's going on now with the fires and the, yeah, yeah, the, uh, yeah mudslides. Yeah. It's, it's uh, and um, yeah, yeah, I really wish I, if there was like one property to return to, I would love to see a uh, I always said it. Neo surf Nazis must also die. That should <laughs> be the sequel. That'll be really, really good. Well, but yeah, don't George get George would love to do it if you. Uh, uh, you know, if anybody wants, if anybody out there wants to finance, I, I would put money into, uh, I just don't have half a million bucks, but there are any people <laughs> out there who want to, uh, you know. Oh, is that what it'll cost? All right, I'll, I'll work on well, it. I'll work I mean, on it. We're good, guys. Uh, we're going to do it. Neo it, surf Nazi must also much. die. When you see what's there and yeah. really good quality uh, camera. 
Yes, not yes. Not just the uh, Any Wednesday guy, but the yeah. other. They were all Hollywood guys. You know, and, uh, was shot Union. Don't, for our younger audience, don't get afraid of the title. Don't get afraid of the title. It's a very good movie. The bad guys all die in the end. <laughs> Spoiler alert. In fact, most of the actors have already died. The yes. The actors themselves are dead. I hope Peter George is still alive. Well, that was a downer. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> See the film that is creating a tidal wave of action all over the world. See, surf Nazis must die. Well, let's, hey, it's been 40 years. Come on, man. Let's lighten up a mo the mood. Well, hold on. I want to make one more Okay, point. okay, okay. Sorry. We sorry. brought Surf Nazis to Cannes Festival. And yeah. again, we put up huge posters with the Nazis, with the whole thing. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, whatever year that was. And people were horrified. They were, you know, these snotty bureaucrats. They don't, most of them don't make movies. Yeah. They have no idea what a movie is. And they're, oh, you know. Yeah. And back to where, where are we going to have lunch tonight? You know, what, are you going to the party, the big party? You know, they, so nobody, again, the same thing. But Rex Reed saw it. He mm -hmm. was a big time uh, critic. Yeah. He actually went in and so did Ebert, Roger Ebert. They actually went in to see it and they liked it. So they Ebert were, liked it. Yeah, Ebert liked it a lot. Wow. He that's, usually that's, does not like these things. Yes, he gave, uh, from then on, he was kind of a fan. He gave Sergeant Kabuki Man a very good review. That I did know. I think I did uh, but know that. The other yeah. guy, uh, the guy who bought John Travolta's white suit, uh, Siskel, he did, he, <laughs> he did not, he was a nasty dude. Yeah, this is cool. Uh, he, uh, yeah, he's not, yeah, he nice. Wasn't, he's not a nice guy. He, he must was, have been miserable. He was a party pooper. Um, yeah, but yeah, fun. I'm fun. glad that Ebert, like, look, I don't really agree with a lot of Ebert's reviews, but I always appreciated Ebert. I thought he, like, presented his reviews. And he, really loved he loved he movies. Loved he loved movies. He loved movies. So, again, even if he didn't agree with, I know a lot of people shit on him, and it's like, ah. well, no, he was always entertaining to listen to. Yeah, even absolutely. if he, I totally disagreed with him. He was sure. pretty good. So few people who genuinely <laughs> like movies, especially yeah. in the movie industry. Yes. Yeah. It's all about who did you, it, how much you're going to spend. Now, you haven't done the modern thing where you try to censor the title on your store or anything, right? It's still Surf Nazis Must Die. Yeah, yeah. But okay, uh, yeah. Uh, hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm yeah. was refused at just about every single film festival except the really big one. Oh, That's wow. how we found out it was a problem <laughs> uh, because they were publicizing it and none of the big Canadian... Uh, Fangor Fantasia. Fantasia. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, you probably know it. It's a huge yeah. uh, genre festival. And I, I was reunited with Takashi Miike there the last Oh, time. nice. But uh, he said that uh, they have a big PR firm and they, they were really, this was their big movie. This was like the mm -hmm. anchor movie. And they couldn't get any of the uh, media to take the title. Ugh. Just the idea of the title yeah. apparently was too well, much. Well, there's, um, there's like companies now, like there are games about World War II where they get rid of the SWAT sticker. And it's like, well, I mean. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, they're like, there's Nazis in the game, but we can't show the symbol. That'd be too much. It's like, well, I mean, they're. <laughs> They're Nazis. Like I, like I, 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 don't, I think we're all fine with that, right? We, yeah. We, what makes what, what? So, what villain could be worse than that? God, where do you find a bad guy who, that's worse? Well, than yeah, we, we mentioned my co-host Johanna earlier, but let's move on. Uh, now, listen. Hey, I was uh, making. I was writing your name for something. I'm going to present yeah. to you. And I, I, we, Rocco and I, we couldn't remember the name, so. Uh, you couldn't remember my name, so, uh, my very famous name, I, Tony from Hack. Hey, I took huge amounts of acid in the '60s. Okay, uh, that's but, fair. Uh, 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 um, Dylan said your name was Troy, so I started <laughs> writing Troy on this uh, beautiful certificate. This, so, uh, you, actually, the equivalent of the Oscar in Tromaville. Oh, good. Which good I plan to pre present you, but yeah. luckily nobody's watching this, so I'm not. <laughs> I'm not doing any spoiler alert. So, speaking of uh, fancy stuff, yes, uh, this is. Troma's Collector's Edition, a very, very uplifting, uh, emotional film, Blood Sucking Freaks. Uh, let's let's read this here. Troma Studios is proud to present. You guys really went all out on this one. Well, again, <laughs> we, we are lucky. We have a great distributor, yeah. and they they're turning our movies that nobody yeah. wants to see into these yeah. uh, huge successes. No joke. It's yeah. going it, well. Here we go. We're Troma Studios job. is proud to present the Collector's Edition director's cut of. Blood Sucking Freaks, directed by Joel M. Reed, GI Executioner. Blood Sucking Freaks is a cult classic with a following second only to the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Hmm. I did not uh, know yeah, that, well, but I'll I'm, go, not yeah, I do. I'm not surprised. You know, Lloyd, there might be some exaggerated going on there. Blood Sucking Freaks well, is a, a. It is a beautiful film. Uh, you know, really. It's, and again, uh, here's an example of, uh, of how a, a, a low budget film looks good mm -hmm. 
right? This was shot in 35. They yes. paid attention to lighting. It, it looked good. Yes, Whereas, I saw this movie for the first time, uh, what'd you call it, like two years ago on Joe Bob's show. I didn't know about it. I like this one. I love yeah. trauma, but some of them, I, they've gone past my radar and whatnot, or I didn't have access to them. Well, the Blood Sucking Freaks really is the only movie in yeah. about a thousand of our movies that we would not get involved with today but yeah uh, this like movie this. this movie is pretty messed up uh well, you know we, we've changed this <laughs> just like obama i've matured yeah so yeah it's about like a guy who owns like a theater yeah and he's just torturing uh women and people down the there grand guignol the french uh, in the uh, late 19th century they yes. this was actually a form of theater yes uh, but it's it's really funny i think chris jericho uh made fun of it because he was like He's like, if this was in a modern movie with realistic stuff, it would be horrifying. But all the torture in it is like accidentally funny because it doesn't like the one where they're stretching the girl. It doesn't look like anything's happening. And she's like, ah, and it's <laughs> yes, like, all right. Indeed. Her legs are kind of spread. I don't understand. <laughs> and the cannibals in the, uh, at the end are terrific. Too. Yeah. So how did you uh, first come about blood sucking freaks? It was uh, made. We yes. can't take any credit for it. Other no, I, I, yeah, it's... We, we did change the title. It was what was the title? Uh, Sardou, uh, and then it was called The Incredible Torture Show. Ah. Uh, the original distributor chopped it all up, so it was our. It was came out as an R. Ah. And it had it was nothing, but Joel Reed uh, showed us. Uh, he came to us, yeah. and uh, I guess after something he saw and said, "Hey, here's the real film," and uh, so we. You know, the R-rated distributor took a shit with it. Yeah, he was happy to get rid of it. So Joel showed us to restore, how to restore it, which we did. And yeah. uh, it's been quite successful, although it really is a... Uh, I mean, I don't want to use the word obscenity, but uh, there's definitely a lot of things there that would piss Well, off. according to the box, it's... Uh, according to the LA Times, uh -huh. it's sicko and gross out. Uh, LA Weekly calls it ghastly. <laughs> and uh, Village View says it's utterly sickening. An American cinema. Uh, sorry, it's a very no, low quality picture. Uh, there isn't a single frame of blood sucking freaks that isn't completely repulsive and fascinating at the same time. Was that what you said when you saw the film in its entirety? The I first saw time? that it was funny. <laughs> I saw the same thing you saw. Lemmy, by the way, from Motorhead, he yeah. he became a fan because of uh, Blood Sucking Freaks. That's awesome. And he's in about eight of our movies because of yes. that movie. And you're right, Chris Jericho is obsessed with it. Yeah, he did the song on Joe Bob. Check out uh, J Chris Jericho's Blood Sucking Freak song. I didn't... So I remember watching him in the 90s on WCW, and he had that guy, Ralphus. Yes. And I didn't realize it was a reference to this until he uh, he mentioned it on that show. But yeah, there's like a little guy, Ralphus, in right. it. <laughs> And I love how the, what was his name, Sardou, Sardou was the bad yeah. I love how he's the bad guy, but he's just like, all right, tonight you can beat me up. Here you go. And it's like, they're so sick and twisted. Well, Joel Reed was pretty, pretty <laughs> twisted. So I, I prefer, as, as crazy as that movie is, G.I. Executioner. G.I. Executioner. I haven't seen that one. It's hilarious. Not meant to be. It was meant to be sort of a yeah. James Bond ripoff. Yeah. But it was filmed at Raffles in Singapore, which uh, is one of the world class, uh, at least in my day, it was, uh, you know, the top Asian hotel. Yeah. And just that this movie was filmed in and around this place where the rich people go. <laughs> I, I couldn't get over that alone. But, yeah. but uh, uh, check out the G.I. Executioner. I will. I will. So Very profitable on uh, it was huge on uh, Vestron at Vestron. Was oh, the, it was VHS. a Vestron tape. Nice huge. with that title. Our good friend Joe Lascola from Movie Dumpster might have that. Maybe. Well, I can certainly. It's on Troma now if you want to see it. Oh, good, good, good. Yes. Yeah, so, um, Blood Sucker Freak. Did that play? Did you put it in theaters? Yes. Like the director's cut. Yes. Have I you? Did. did you see it in a the theater with a crowd? I need to know what yes, that was like. I saw it in Allentown. Oh, in fact, around it, here. It was a midnight show in Allentown. Okay. If I remember correctly, somebody, local, I don't think the theater, but yeah. maybe it was uh, Sheets. Okay. <laughs> they don't sheets. give two Sheets about it, but they, <laughs> somebody paid to do have us uh, do something there. Yeah. And uh, what was their reaction? They loved it. It was, <laughs> oh, they were horrified. And wow, loved it. Allentown. It was, what, it was <laughs> what that guy says. Uh, uh, repulsive and fascinating. <laughs> at this, and, and, you know, Lemmy's not a dumb guy. He's a historian. No. He was a historian. Yeah, and, Lemmy was great. And uh, Jericho also. These guys are smart people. They, yeah. they got, you know, they see that it's, you know, the fun is the, 
they, they behind the curtain a little bit. Yeah, right? I actually I've watched it a couple times. I kind of been oh I've been wanting to watch it again. It's just it's such a weird beyond, movie. Yeah. I I want to watch it with like a friend. I gotta bring friends in to watch yeah, it. I haven't yeah. I watched it with a few people, but I'm like I need I need new friends. I want to show them this movie. But I know it's one of those movies where they're like Tony. God damn it! Like why are you showing me this? Yeah. It's still pretty pretty rough. Now let's talk about misogynistic, misogynistic. I think would you say yes? But I mean, he's a bad guy. He's supposed to be. Well, but there is violence to women, which today, even if it's, uh, even if it's happy, you know, even if the woman likes it, you're not supposed to show it. Yeah, yeah. Sadu, he was the creator and the director. He was the master of blood sucking freaks. A show that will make anyone rich. So mm-hmm. next up, another another family film. Can you imagine the MPAA in Troma's War, a movie I spent five years writing and directing and editing? <laughs> they wouldn't, they didn't, wouldn't let us hear the word pussy. <laughs> there was no, pu- you didn't see a woman's vagina. It was a, it was a, just somebody saying, "Hey, you pussy, you nice pussy," you know. <laughs> it was soldiers, that's how they talk. <laughs> and and we and the, every cut we have to make, it's thirty-five millimeter. Mm-hmm. And and the MPAA won't look at an interlock rough cut or, or fine cut. You have to, at least with us, we had to send them the married print. Yeah. That's uh, Wait, what, 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 year was, what year was this when they wouldn't let you say pussy in a movie? It was uh, Terra Firma, so 1999, uh, at that 2000, point, 2000. At that point, Scorsese himself of course. in the 70s is a taxi driver saying the N-word with reckless abandon. I, I know. That MPA, yeah, fine. Well, that's what happens if you're an independent artist. There's a double standard. Yeah. It's okay for Bruce Willis and Die Hard to have knees, serious violence with uh, yeah. smash knees. But when Troma does it for fun or just says the word pussy, they miss. And, and it's not so much the cut. It's that we had to cut. The sound is mm. uh, uh, retarded from the picture. Okay. Actually, in the Troma movie, sound and picture is retarded. Uh, but that's a different kind of retarded. So, so, uh, but whenever you cut composite print, mm-hmm. it's first of all, a print is two or th- uh, now twenty five hundred bucks. Yeah, at least, and uh, yeah. we, we can't afford it. But back then, we would ha- we had to go back remix to make the cuts. Mm-hmm. You know, it's thousands of dollars, and they yeah. knew that. So, what we would do to get the R rating, we chop the actual composite print and and uh, glue it back together. And there would be these horrible jump cuts. Yeah. Can you imagine Scorsese having jump cuts in his and having to deal with it? Uh, all yeah. I can tell you is we did not show the R-rated blood sucking freaks in very many theaters. <laughs> Most of the engagements were, in fact, Joel Reed's director's cut. We got caught though. The uh, a woman yeah. took her five-year-old child. Why? In the Bronx to Why? see a movie called Blood Sucking Freaks <laughs> with a black with a sleazy black and white poster. I've never seen. And so of- she complained. I remember seeing one of the new uh, Halloween movies at 10, 10 p.m. and someone brought a baby. And it's like, what are you? I'm fine showing kids like violent movies, but I want to show them blood sucking freaks. I'm like, let's wait Isn't till that 10. Something? Isn't that amazing? But it's like a baby what at 10 p.m. Like, I'm like, well, what maybe are you it, doing? Maybe this girl, the baby was like five, enough to understand. Yeah. It was like a toddler type. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was watching violent movies and stuff at five, but nothing like blood sucking. Like. Even my parents would have been like, "All right, this one's a little too. Let's 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 yeah. let's put Predator back on." Let's, let's. We saw blood sucking freaks yeah. in Times Square. Oh, my wife and I. <laughs> the audience was, too, and again, lots of little kids. No, yeah. lots. Of, there wasn't just one. There was a bunch of them. That is weird. But to the audience, they were they loved it. Yeah. They, it was so much fun. As you yeah. know, you know. And so, Times Square was the. It was in the days of prostitution and porno. And all. Oh, yeah. So it was yeah. perfect for the neighborhood. I missed out on those days. <laughs> but anyway. It wasn't so nice. So there's one day that we should all never forget, and that's Mother's Day, oh. which leads us to our next film, Mother's Day. They wanted to make their mother proud in the worst way. Let's see here. This is, a, by the way, great cover. I love this artwork on this Charles movie. Charles Kaufman, my brother. Yes. Uh, wrote, directed, and that might be... A, a, a real masterpiece. Yes. Eli Roth says it's his favorite uh, yes. horror film. Uh, uh, whatever movie. Mama wants, Mama gets. In an isolated wilderness, best friends Jackie, Abby, and Trina are captured by the most decadent family in movie history. When one of the girls meets a fate worse than death, the survivors soon make Rambo look like a pussycat. Oh, the, you were allowed to say pussycat on there. 
I'm, I, 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 again, we, I don't think we wrote that. I Lloyd, Lloyd, they, I'm... I think I'm, you're distributors, the professionals. Lloyd, I'm going to submit this to the MPA. <laughs> <I'm, I'm, laughs> or change the word to pussy pussy. Yes. Like to take out the word cat. <laughs> Makes Rambo look like an animal. Uh, Mother's Day, where there are more twists and turns, laughs and whimpers per frame than in all the Halloweens put together. Really, throw another horror movies under the bus well, there, who, aren't who's you? the quote? It made some New York Times, maybe. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, celebrate, got very good reviews. Celebrate and- motherhood in the wicked way with Mother's Day. Warn- warning, this movie contains extreme violence. Well, you put a warning there. Yes, this is another one that I've recently seen. Loved it. I was like, well, this that is a, that's a real movie. Yeah, I'm like, that's this a, is messed up. Yeah, isn't, this it is great? All... isn't it great? So, yeah, where did, where did your brother get the idea for this? Uh, well, we have a mother and the two guys. Okay, <laughs> uh, I'm going to stop I'm gonna <laughs> stop you right there. Please don't tell me this is based <laughs> off uh, anything. It's totally, per- you know, you write about what you know. My brother would <laughs> go with his best friend. They would go out uh, every year. They'd get together, or maybe there were two of them, and they'd go out in the camp and yeah. have a, you know, bachelor time. Yeah. And uh, so he put that as the opening, you know, kind of the... And, uh, uh, you know, the, the first scene is hilarious, too. This yep. uh, self-improvement seminar. Uh, <laughs> uh, hug, hug, the, <laughs> hug the person next to you. <laughs> Charles Coffin. He, he, yeah. he, he I, I, you know, I have many regrets. I am not yeah. like Edith Piaf. Uh, j'ai beaucoup de regrets. Mm. I, I really wish I would have done more to try to get my brother and me uh, working together. Uh, but yeah. he, he, he can't live off uh, trauma movies. And he ah. wanted to... You know, he, he he wanted to, you know, do better. So yes, he, and he had, uh, am, oops, sorry, he had oh. ammunition. He had Mother's Day. He had when nature calls. Ooh. It's what Gonzalez and uh, no Rodriguez and uh, Quentin wanted to do with the uh, Groundhouse, Grindhouse, Grindhouse, Grindhouse. Uh, his movie when nature calls. Uh, check it out. It's it's wonderful. It's it's what I think Quentin was trying to do. Except you don't do that for sixty million dollars. You make <laughs> you make. Uh, when nature calls for 300, 400, whatever it was. Yeah. I yeah. Think it was 400,000. But no, Mother's Day. It's a I, very good movie. I really, really enjoyed it. And like, uh, I there, there are people who don't enjoy this, I found out. Well, I, <laughs> they, they, they do not appreciate this film. I really like it. I like that she gets suffocated with a boob at the end. Yeah. Very symbolic. Very symbolic. She smothered her kids. Sure, she sure. gets smothered. I'm like, that is very deep. And really, that's like really good attention to detail. How about the uh, death by TV? That's a good one. Right? And, that's a good one. Uh, Tromeo and Juliet, mm-hmm. uh, for real fans, was a callback to my brother's uh, scene. We used a, yeah. uh, it was when these computers were coming. Oops. <laughs> these, these went, okay, these you, you you have now done worse than Johanna. I don't think she's ever punched the mic like that. Before. I love you, Johanna. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... So uh, that, that's where we got the idea from my brother's thing. <laughs> and Tromeo and Juliet has a text of, of this new technology. Mm. You know, Tromeo's on the computer, uh, on porno on the computer with yeah. the VHS tapes. You know, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's... it's uh, yeah. my, but brother, Alice... my brother's a great a great sense of humor. Yeah. And my sister, Susan L. Kaufman, mm. who, who's still in the business, she, uh, uh, she was the art director on these movies. Mm. When Nature Calls... Mother's Day, and if you ever get a chance to see Jakarta, which was Chris Noth's first starring role, uh, we discovered him in Waitress, but uh, he has the lead. He's the action hero in Jakarta, nice. shot in Indonesia, and uh, uh, my brother could write a book about that. That's a good one, too. That's a <laughs> yeah. great movie, but it was acquired by one of those big companies that went public, Ow. and they went bust, and it's stuck in the... Uh, like Limbo? Uh, yeah. Well, probably, uh, you know, where movies go to be anonymous or something. Yeah. I, I don't... It's buried in somebody's life. I will say, out of uh, all the like, you know, horror movies that are built around a holiday, this is definitely one of the better ones. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I like it more than. Well, I don't it's know, beautifully I'm to written. Think of it. I mean, it's well. It really is, as you say. It sets yeah. it up here and gets pays off. Yeah, the it's acting really is good. good. Yeah, I want one. What is this? With, I want one with everything, or the <laughs> falls out the window. From the darkest corner of the imagination to the outermost reaches of insanity and terror comes a celebration of mayhem. Charles Kaufman's Mother's Day. And now on to our next uh, oh, thank movie you. here. Thank you very much. Something, something every everyone loves, uh, police officers. Let's talk about your next film. Uh, the superhero for the 90s, Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD. Uh, here we go. Here's the here's the story here for you know 
a lot of our fans, they love superhero stuff. Who doesn't? They're probably like, Tony, talk about more superheroes. Well, here you go. According to the ancient prophecy, the evil one will conquer and rule our Earth in the year 2000. Luckily, there's still hope for mankind. Directed by Lloyd Kaufman and Michael Herz, the trauma team who brought you the Toxic Avenger, Tromeo and Juliet, Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD, introduces Sar Sergeant Harry Griswold, a streetwise New York cop and the world's most unlikely superhuman hero. Not just a superhero, superhuman well, well, hero. There's a reason for that. When Toxie was at Marvel, he oh, was a superhero. Right. But once they, Marvel went bust, uh, something mm -hmm. happened and whatever. Yeah. And and uh, we we were sent a letter by the lawyers. We cannot use the word superhero. Marvel and Warner Brothers co-owns that word. Oh. So we say superhuman hero. Got you. We had another one like that. Yeah. Fat Boys. Do you remember the band? There was oh, yeah. We had a thing guys. for them here somewhere. <laughs> we, we had a movie called, I didn't make it, but it's very good. Uh, yeah. we, we released it as Fat Boy Goes Nutsoid. It was originally called Fat... No, it was called Fat Boy Goes Nutsoid. Yeah. And the Fat Boys uh, uh, threatened to sue us. Oh, wow. Come on, so, Fat Boys. Yeah, what do you think? Well, one of them rolled off a couch and died from Jesus falling. Jesus uh, Christ. From, anyway, while, he was while asleep. investigating the murder. But, but, but <laughs> fat, fat guy, they did us a favor, right? Fat guy, fat guy, the uh, uh, fat guy goes nutsoid. That's, that's, that's kind of like one. cooler, right? Yeah, fat, it's got a better and, ring and to it. And the main character is a big fat uh, yeah. uh, sanitation worker. <laughs> so Very good film. While investigating the murder of a famous Japanese actor, Griswold discovers he's been imbued with the legendary powers of Kabuki Man. Without warning, <laughs> Griswold transformed into Sergeant Kabuki Man, NYPD. Beautiful, sensuous Lotus must teach him to master the high-tech weapons of his Kabuki arsenal, which include lethal heat-seeking chopsticks, pyro-projectile parasols, and fatal flying sushi. Follow the eye-popping, heart-pounding action. Experience the special effects film uh, climax as Sergeant Kabuki NYPD does battle with the terrifying evil one to save the world. So where did you come up with Sergeant Kabuki, man? I worked in, you know, we shot Toxic yeah. 2 in Japan. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, that's and, right. Yeah, that I really liked when uh, Toxie went to Japan. So that you got the idea. You got the Pinchinko movie. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Pinchinko machines. Yeah. Uh, well, what was going on was at the time uh, the Japanese were rich and mm -hmm. they were buying Rockefeller Center and they were okay. buying these American golden treasures. You yeah. know how dare they? You know how <laughs> dare? Uh, you know there was a congressman actually. It was in the Times. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Pearl Harbor all over again. Okay. Uh, when they bought uh, Rockefeller Center and, and little different, but uh, okay, it's absurd. So yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> what like... I was outraged. It's disgusting. Mm. So uh, I, I, the idea here is he's a Bronx policeman yeah. who turns into this, uh, and he has to learn how to deal with his Western uh, society and mm -hmm. culture and with his newfound Asian. And if he solves it. He can uh, have peace. He make the yeah. world a better place. About east, so that's meaning, kind of the theme. Yeah, yes, yeah, east yeah. meaning west. Uh, it's your classic of the universe. Yes, it's your classic superhero origin story it of really him is. learning to use his powers. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I really, really like Sergeant Kabuki Man. Again, I have another soft spot because our good friend Doug plays the current Sergeant yeah, Kabuki Doug, well, Man. That's a nice thing. Doug Sackman has uh, been has been raising money. He's been yeah. successful. He got a uh, Brandon uh, Brandon Bassam. Who uh, I just produced his new film called uh, The Final Beginning, yeah. The Slashening. If you haven't seen the first one, it's on Troma now. The first, oh, he good. is he's going to be another James Gunn. Nice. In addition so, to, uh, to in addition <laughs> to Rocco Ziebenbergen, whose yeah. name I spent six months trying to. <laughs> but it, it, Rocco's going to get it. He just, they have to stay with it. They're talented people. Yeah. And 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 Brandon, uh, uh, he's. He's got the uh, he's got the courage to uh, nice. He's not afraid of uh, being so a... so. This movie, Toxic Avenger, they really really inspired me when I was in college to make Mummy Cop. I know you remember oh, Mummy yeah, Cop, of course. Yes. Uh, currently, I only did two seasons, and then I got really really broke, and then I got too busy to do another one. So the series ended on a cliffhanger. You had great my uh, uh, alliteration, murder music, and mm -hmm. uh, it was a uh, murder mystery mayhem. Oh, mummy oh I Cop. just remember the M M M. Uh, big on Stan Lee uh, yeah. and I were buddies for 50, 60 years. He yeah. he always said to me, try to come up with the, you know, the the green gargan. The, yeah. You know, something yeah. Like, you know, something that. that yeah, so, he was sorry. Stan Lee, who was uh, in Return of Nukemai. 
Indeed, uh, and about ten of our movies. Were yes, bad, but he, I think, like Lemmy, it's his last film. Yeah. But, uh, so but, um, yeah, go on. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. yeah, it inspired me to do Mummy Cop. It's got not like quite the same humor, but it's it's a little. It's very very I, I similar to this. Saw it. Saw yes, it. yes, yeah. and uh, what you got? Uh, Doug was filming a Kabuki Man thing, and I remember the one day I'm like, "Hey, can we do the Mummy Cop Kabuki Man crossover?" And the crossover is literally they're sitting in chairs and they switch chairs. <laughs> that's the whole video. It's like, hey, can I cross over and sit in that chair? And that's the whole crossover of it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love uh, Sergeant Kabuki, man. Um, yeah, he shows up in other trauma movies, but you're right. He never got like a proper sequel. Um, I like when he's the bad guy in Toxie 4 because yeah, it's an alternate great, universe. Huh? And I that, loved it. He was a real... Uh... He fights Toxie, right? Yeah, right. And he beats Forget Toxie. Batman v Superman or Civil War. <laughs> the, but when Toxie fought Kabuki Man, I was like, whoa, this is rough. <laughs> and that was inspired by our fans because mm. I, I've written books and I go on a little tour. Uh, I stay at a lot of great Ramada inns, beautiful. And uh, just like a modium. <laughs> <laughs> I love the product. Uh, but, but, uh, the, every time I do a book signing, you know, Barnes and Noble or Bo mm. Borders or I can't remember what it, there's an original, there's an, anyway, I did one here. Mm. They, always somebody, what, what would happen, Mr. Kaufman, if, if Sergeant Kabuki Man and the Foxing Avenger uh, fought each other? <laughs> and initially I almost criticized, I said, oh, give me a break. I, you know, <laughs> you know. Uh, but then I kept, they kept saying it. They wanted, they wanted, yeah. this is what they wanted. Except I couldn't do it, you know, on a certain level. Yeah. But I still think it's a lot of fun. And and Paul Kermsey, who played Kabuki Man, mm. the evil Kabuki Man. Yes. A, and the good Kabuki Man. Mm -hmm. He uh, he was, in fact, a martial art uh, judo expert. Yeah, it was a good belt. fight scene. He had a real black belt. He is America's first accidental oriental crime-fighting hero. His name is Harry Griswold. But you can call him... Sergeant Kabuki Man, NYPD. Who are you? I'm Kabuki Man. The final film, there's plenty of great trauma films, Poultry Guys, Tromeo and Juliet, but one of my favorites here, uh, real timely, Troma's War. Oh. <laughs> Not a true story, but who cares? It is. It, it's a wonderful film. I it agree is. with you. It it's is very, a, very great. Let me very underrated. It's me, a cursed film. Yeah, there's there's something about this film that I want to bring up. But let me read sure, it here. Sure. This is 1988. Something about my lunch I want yeah. to bring up. Uh, those here those studio. fringe dwelling crazies who brought you the Toxic Avenger in the class of Nuke and High are at it again. You don't get that in a modern movie like uh, DVDs and stuff. They're not like, <laughs> oh, those assholes. They're back with another one. Like you don't get that. Um, well, it's, <laughs> not easy what does Mel Brooks say it's great to be the king not easy to be the uh, back of the bus for this, 50 years this time declaring war against the terrorists and the maniacal battle spree that'll knock your socks off on a lonely Caribbean island aircraft survivors emerge from a tangle of severed limbs and dumb jokes to confront some real trouble a creepy cadre c-a-d-r-e cadre cadre sorry I'm not, I'm not very well. You well. did the French. Cadre. Cadre. Very That's good. exactly what I did. You did it with a Spanish accent, though. I, I am Italian. Cadre. Of terrorists. Cadre. 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 Uh, of terrorists who control the island, these guerrilla guerrillas <laughs> are so ticked <laughs> off when company drops in unannounced. They unleash a splatter tat tat of machine gun fire and give sleaze lord <laughs> horror action comedy cultists all the gruesome they grovel for. Looking for a good time? Then give your brain a rest for 105 freaked out minutes with Troma's War. This movie's awesome. Uh, well, thank you. I'm the action's you awesome. Me. I love that the two-faced government guy, the yeah, head. Yeah, capital, uh, you know, military capitalist. Uh, yes. Right? That's really good commentary in it. Uh, but one of my favorite <laughs> things about this, uh, when you went on the, what was it, the Morton Downey Jr. show? Oh, Yes. Is that on that? I don't know if it's on the DVD. It's on YouTube. When you went on the show. To oh, yeah. Your... The trauma people, they put it up constantly. But yeah, you went on his show and you got kicked off his show. Kicked like... off. I got beaten up. Yeah. What was that? And my uh, my uh, my assistant, Arthur, yeah. his name was Arthur. Uh, I brought him on uh, because mm -hmm. it would be, you know, we wore up in Mitzvah suits. And, yeah. and I thought it'd be nice for his mom to see him on uh 
on uh, TV. You know, it was universal. <laughs> yeah, this will be real nice for your mom. W-R-R. You're going to be on TV. Well, oh, let's I, put the Morton Downey yes, Jr. show. Okay. Imagine the poor mother seeing that. What I did to her poor son. Uh, yeah, oh, they, I remember. They, they separated my shoulder. I mean, it was no joke. Yeah, it, it I, was a, a punk. They punked us. Yeah. So when I, yeah, I remember I was uh, when I was getting like real into trauma stuff on YouTube. I like found it. I'm like, wait a minute, I because I knew Martin Morton Downey Jr. He has a small part in Predator Two. He's the asshole uh, oh. news anchor guy. I'm like, oh, I didn't know he had a talk show. I'm like, oh, Lloyd was on this talk show. Oh, I bet he had a lot of things to say. They, they, he makes fun of you. They show the clip and then just everyone boos you guys and throws you out. I'm like, this is the best interview I've ever seen. Holy yeah, shit. Wasn't it great? And I couldn't uh, believe it. Also, my wife had literally given birth like the day before. Was, <laughs> so first, this is great. Wait, wait so you had a kid and you're like, all right, honey, I got to go do a TV show. I'll be no, back. Oh, God. It was better than that. It was, yeah. hey, we, they're sending a limo for us. They're taking us to New Jersey. <laughs> WOR Studios, Universal, the big time. And they called Troma and said, we're doing a Halloween party. And we'd like uh, mm-hmm. Lloyd and Troma to be there. And we had finished. Uh, uh, we sent over. We had uh, shot Troma's War. Yeah. So we sent over a couple of little scenes. So, <laughs> so the, he showed like five seconds of a guy with a, a piece of a, a peach. Uh, yeah. Uh, that was it. Yeah. Uh, get shot. The peach pops out. He was complaining. <laughs> He's like, your movies never work or something. Or the Well, no. Never- what they do is they go to the audience. And ahead of time, while we were in the green room, mm. we heard the audience screaming and yelling, and uh, and it, you know they had costumes on, and mm. fake guns and bayonets and stuff. In yeah. those days, nobody cared. Uh, and and uh, so this horrible-looking crowd. My wife is sitting right down there with them, and uh, and I'm up with on the stage, and uh, and so uh, this is what Downey does. You know, this is his signature. Yeah. So we keep them, or shall we get rid of them? And he's like, you know, well, yeah, you know, and they so they all because what's ridiculous is if you watch it again, whenever he mentions trauma and yeah. uh, some of the movies with surf yeah. Nazis, he mentioned that. Yeah. He, yeah. They loved it. It's a good movie. So uh, it, it was all set up ahead of time. Yeah. I, I that's one of my favorite interviews. I'm like, that is nuts. You'll never see. You'll never see. I don't know. Christopher Nolan, David Fincher. You'll never <laughs> see them be like. Be invited on to like uh, I don't know who's who's got a show now. Jimmy Fallon yeah, right. won't invite him on Colbert, the show and then they just boo them and beat the hell out of them. <laughs> Nancy Pelosi on Colbert. <laughs> I, I plus, it, it, you know, I separated my shoulder. The force was so strong. My watch band they broke the watch. It went oh, flying. Wow! Uh, and uh, they called the co- uh, uh, cops, or maybe I called the cops. Somebody <laughs> called the cops. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to get off the stage because the audience yeah. was insane. I. And they had weapons, and, I, and my wife is there. Yeah. So I, I didn't want to have to go through the audience to get out. It was, I had to go off. You was, know, she, it was, was, she, was she like making sure no one knew she, that she you was were horrified? There? Like, she, she, oh, she, definitely. It wasn't. She the, did one of those. Like, that, oh, was look not, that guy. I don't know. She and Michael's <laughs> wife, when we showed Squeeze Play at Yale, <laughs> they sort of they had to leave the room at the end because uh, the uh, Yale Law School Film Society was so outraged by Squeeze Play. <laughs> well, anyway, um, <laughs> well, thank you for liking Trauma War because. Yeah. It's and well, hey, Joe Bob, he lo- he was the first one he showed of. He loved it. He loved yeah, it, and it is a great movie. Yeah. Troma's War makes Rambo Three look like Lassie Come Home. Variety, a Troma extravaganza, positively upscale. The New York Post, Troma's War. Rated R. Well, Lloyd, I really love these movies, and I think that they will do very well in my store. Can I get these tapes from you? Well, I got something much better for you. Okay. You For $50 a year, as little as $50. Whoa. First month free. Okay. You can have one full year of Troma Now. Oh, wow. It's the future, but now. You can see, aren't you tired of all that same old bullshit on Netflix and Amazon? Oh, and now, I hate it. Yep. Now, step up to Truman Now. I, I don't even... Tony, know. a thousand movies. Uh, 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 Lloyd Kaufman's movies. I love Music Lloyd videos. Kaufman. Well, thank I you. know that guy. <laughs> He's you. I, I think if we, I think we do in fact have... Uh, <laughs> Music, mur- murder, and mayhem. Music cop. I don't I think, think mummy have- cops on there. Oh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> no. But we we have literally a thousand movies. Uh, yeah. All the trauma classics and constant new movies. Right yeah. now we have uh, 
uh, ba- Brandon Bassam, screenwriter of uh, Shakespeare's Shitstorm. Yeah. <laughs> the Slashening Part 1 yes. is being featured now. Very yes. good. There are about and 10 brand new, really independent uh, movies coming from the heart that are, mm-hmm. you know, they're all controversial, but they're entertaining. they got something to say, and Troma right. Now is growing. Uh, it's about they are five very, years old. They are very controversial. I was watching Shakespeare, uh, Shakespeare Shitstorm, and I'm like, oh, yeah. This might, uh, this might get a little people angry, but I loved it. No, I you. loved it. And I don't know if I mentioned on here, uh, the former wrestler Gata is in it. Uh, and she is great. I've never seen her. At, like, she was a great actress. I'm the like, original Holy Gata. Shit. Yeah, I, yeah. I had no idea that was her at first. I'm like, oh my God, she's great. She plays Caliban. I guess I shouldn't spoil it. Well, yeah, spoiler. She has a great uh, action scene where she beats the shit out of uh, yeah. uh, the boy. Uh, what is yeah, it? and you play multiple roles in it. Yes, I do. And I, they were very, very good. Now, now digital de-aging is something very popular in Hollywood. And I want to say the de-aging to put you in the 80s, in this movie and in uh, Return to Return to Newcomb High, the the de aging really? was incredible. On our hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm. Yeah, in both My movies de-aging? when they made you younger, I I, I thought it was seamless. I no couldn't people. believe it. Thank you, oh, boy. Did all the budget go to making you look that younger? <laughs> well, I, I, look, I look much better as a woman <laughs> down at the Holiday Inn uh, over in Chinatown. Uh, I do a nice little pose, <laughs> but. Uh, but yeah, it's got a it's got a great cast. It's hilarious because the day we were supposed to do my first eighty scene, mm. a big scene in a, in the street with a, a mob of, uh, you know, a rally kind of press yeah. conference with a couple hundred people, uh, they lost the wig. Oh my this god! Very expensive wig. So somebody had a I don't, I don't know if it was the end of a mop. It was some like thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was some piece of an animal. So <laughs> they put it on my head. And it was, like, but I'm happy you liked it. That was great. Yeah, I loved it. May have it. been better than the very expensive. See, you don't need to spend money. Yeah, the yeah. head crushing in the original Toxic Avenger, yeah. first head crushing in the entire history of cinema. Uh, they 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 want to charge thousands of dollars to to make the head, mm-hmm. you know, when the plaster and all that stuff, so it cracks. And Michael Hurst says, "Hey, we can't spend that. Get get a melon. Get a cantaloupe." Put a put a wig on the pin happy got, face. You, you know what's it. funny? Doug taught me that trick with the the honeydew. You fill it with blood, and I actually used that yeah, head crushing that trick in a bunch of stuff. <laughs> so, so it's a good trick. It's a yeah, good if the, if, yeah. the, if the shots like that, no one's gonna know. No one's gonna know. Oh, it's horrifying. And the, <laughs> back in 1984 when it was shown uh, yeah. for the first time. Yeah. But now it's in every film. Spielberg has a head crushing in. Uh, West Side Story, if I remember. I think he died. I and, haven't seen this newest become, version of West Side Story, become, but, you know, but I heard that, yes. Yeah, world has changed, you know. Yeah. So, Lloyd, thank you so much for coming to Hack the Movies video. Now, did you said well, you had I, something I, for me earlier? Well, Troma Now, um, you should see the movies, and you, I'm sure you and your fans will subscribe. Yes. It's uh, first month free, then $4.99 a month, and it is, well, you, believe me, it's better than the bullshit out there. But uh, you, I have a new technology for you, okay, Tony. So we can't give you the 4K Toxic Avenger historic box, but we've come up with this brand new technology. Okay. Uh, so don't tell anyone. And luckily, uh, I'm sure you'll edit this out. But oh yeah. This is <gasps> Redneck Zombies. Redneck Zombies. And it's a new technology. Uh, I'm not sh- exactly sure what you call it, but uh, all I know is it was filmed in Psychedelia Vision. This oh, is wow. one of the trauma classics, That's Pericles insane. Loons. There's a whole book about this movie. It's so oh, interesting. Wow. It's, it's like rectangular. And yeah, isn't that interesting? That is crazy. It feels like... Redneck zombies. When a clan of hillbilly dirt farmers turns a misplaced barrel of chemical waste into a whiskey still, going blind is the least of their worries as the toxic moonshine turns them into redneck zombies. Now they're ready to invite a group of wayward Yankees to a down-home feast of southern fried gore and mayhem that will turn your stomach and tickle your funny bones. So grab a seat and set a spell with your favorite gut-chomping, tobacco-chewing, cannibal kinfolk from hell in Redneck Zombies. Well, this look, this is great. This is amazing. This new technology. I got to figure out how to play this. Yeah. But it looks uh, really, really great. The problem great. is it's the, the the public hasn't picked up on it yet. Yes. Oops, sorry. <laughs> sorry, That's Joanna. Okay. Uh, uh, the public hasn't picked up on it. So... They're uh, the, the um, way ahead of the game. Yeah. 
Yeah, what it's were you awesome. What talking about? I can't remember. I don't know. No, what was it? Doing? <laughs> so I had something very important to say, but I don't remember. What was yeah, it? I thought that you had something else for me or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But wait a minute. The head. Cr- oh, the story of redneck zombies. Uh, okay. These two guys, I come to work uh, yeah. early, and these two guys are sitting in front of the Choma booth. It has an open. Uh, Choma uh, building. Yeah. We're not open. And they're sitting there with knapsacks. <laughs> and they had the uh, all the original. Uh, yeah. It was the first movie to be distributed on tape. No. No company dared to distribute a movie shot on three quarter inch tape. Wow! And they had the uh, you know the, the masters in their knapsack, <laughs> and they needed money. That uh, is insane. So we helped them finish it and mm. uh, agreed to you know they people wouldn't touch uh, uh, a thing unless it was on film. Oh they yeah, back to, in those days. Yeah, yeah. back in the head of video, they didn't uh, they didn't want to put tape on videotapes. Yeah, no. And no uh, we did it because if it's if something is engaging. Mm-hmm. You could uh, project, you know, put it on toilet paper. <laughs> my my diarrhea, by the way, is, is definitely more engaging <laughs> than the power of the dog. That <laughs> that is for sure. <laughs> I mean, YouTube's proof of that. People shoot stuff on awful phones and cameras all the time. People watch a, it. Yes, you, people you know, watch it. I mean, hey, Rossellini. Uh, after the war, he he, he made, trauma movies make yeah. Open City look yeah. look like they're uh, you know. Bootleg Chinese <laughs> versions of Gone with the Wind, yeah. and, and his uh, open so his movies are masterpieces. Nice, you know? nice, nice. So uh, you know that's what, and I don't think the uh, everybody follows. No, very few leaders. Yes, very few hack the movies. Very few hack in, the movies uh, in the mainstream. Yes, and I just want to say it's been really great uh, becoming famous like you. Uh, we're both very famous. It's well, you nice are to, very famous. Yes, it's nice to have someone of equal fame here with me. Well, uh, I flew in from France, so uh, yeah, yeah, this is a big deal for us. It's Hack. a big deal. It's a big deal. Now, um, you should call yourself Hack. Hacky, Hacky. Hey, Hacky, I love you, Hacky. <laughs> oh, don't do that. Everyone's going to call me Hacky if hacky. you do that. Yay. Well, I know you're, you've got a, uh, what's his name coming in? Uh, uh, Eminem, I thought. I thought yeah, I Eminem, waiting. Marshall Mathers the third. He's he, out there. He's waiting. We're going to do Eight Mile, but he's um, very good, very good. Yeah, he he can wait a couple minutes. Yeah. So he what do you have? To go into singing. I thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have this. Uh, this is the equivalent of the Oscar, <gasps> and I think it is more heartfelt than any Oscar could be. This is the official trauma diploma. Oh my Tony god! Tony from Hack the Movies. Uh, some people call him Troy. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> For we all your cre- frames, that's okay. For all well, your creativity now, we- and supporting truly independent art. Oh, thank you so much. I'm gonna have to put this somewhere. Well, I might have to get rid of Stallone. Well, yeah, maybe. I mean, what has Stallone ever done? What Rocky? Who's even well, seen Rocky? They Lloyd? They put a mop in. Uh, they he took the toxi mop, <laughs> changes it to a plunger, and uh, suddenly <laughs> demolition man. <laughs> Anyway, that is it from us. Thank you, Lloyd. Thank you, Hack the Movies. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. And uh, check out Troma now. Uh, check out your new movie. Is it? It's on Troma now, or no? Be- no, it's in the uh, hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm. Yep. coming to theater. It opens in New York April eighth. Oh. Museum of the Moving Image. Go and, to the Museum uh, of the theaters. Moving Image. And also at uh, Village uh, Cinema Village in uh, yes. Greenwich Village. And- so go see the movie. It's going to be very. very I, I've seen it. I give it. Do you, you want me to put? You could put. Uh, you could put me on the box. I'll say I gave it two thumbs. <laughs> two middle fingers. Two send, thumbs. Send us a quote. You. You. It means a lot to us. I you. will. I will think of a. I want to think of a really good quote. Great. Um. Yeah. So check out that movie. Also check out Troma now. Uh. To get. By I the think, way, I think I'm my sorry name to, is in the credits of this film. Return to Return to Newcom High. <laughs> uh, by the way, Troma now. If you want to get on it, Troma hyphen or whatever that's called uh, now. <laughs> Dot, wait a minute, Troma now at, that's it. Troma- Troma-now.com. Sorry, it's the pressure of, <laughs> I look up to hack, you know, it's like a big deal for that's me. Okay, that's this okay, that's okay. And yes. Uh, of my career, come on. And if you're new here, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, check out our Patreon. We got plenty of bonus content on Patreon. Oh. Uh, our merch store, you can call our hotline. Uh, you can even mail us some stuff, so that'll be a lot of fun. Thank you, uh, where, Lloyd. Where do you uh, mail it? We have a P.O. box. Oh, very nice. Yeah, what the, is that P.O. The, box? the editor will put it there. I oh, oh, good. The, okay. yeah, the I'm, editor. Trying to, I'm trying to help you out, buddy. The, the, the editor superimposes <laughs> it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's all there. It's, it's there. It's there. It's there. We all we do that all ourselves. In Trump. <laughs> we mop. We clean the toilets. We, yeah, yeah. We don't leave it to the no, we, any, we any, any, editor. Anyway, I got to get Eminem in here. I got to get Eminem in here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So thank you again. And can you play us out? 
I'd be delighted. And thank you so much for enjoying Hashtag Shakespeare's Shitstorm. All right. A lot of it is iambic pentameter. Yep. I have so many things I want to talk about. I'm like going to get off track here. This is the case of a game that was far more popular in Japan than it was in the United States. They never <laughs> went to Mordor. What are you talking about? <laughs> this is kind of weird. <laughs> but there's real detail. There's like wiring underneath. You know, they're, they're one out. and done. That's yeah. it. Sold yeah. out. So they're super hard to come by. <laughs> <laughs> you heard him, guys. Bring it back. Here oh, we go no, again. No, Round no, two. No. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page. Talk, talking, talking about tapes.